Okay, I'm gonna do a quick little screen cap of how you might use uh, GTP3 to generate an article about a technical topic. And, um, you know, theoretically, you could use this technique to fill up your blog with content that was of a relatively low quality. I think a more realistic use case would be to kind of augment your own work as a writer. And this is something I've been kind of playing around with. It's basically like giving GTP3 some a starting point for articles and then trying to help help it along. Yeah. My son Joe wants to, to call out. <laughs> um, he's going to be involved in this video, but only in, in uh, vocals. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to start off here in Ahrefs. So let's say, for example, you wanted to have an article, write an article that ranks for types of API, let's say. Okay, so uh, this is a pretty typical workflow for a lot of SEOs. They would basically find a keyword that they want their article to rank for. They would want something with relatively high volume, so 450 searches a month is pretty good, and relatively low difficulty, so 15 um, difficulty is a kind of relative scale that Ahrefs uses to help define like how hard it would be to rank for this. Uh, and it kind of tells you that like you would need 17 websites to rank in the top 10 for this keyword. Um, so you'd need some backlinks. Uh, but, but let's just say you want to create the content first and um, it'll give you some keyword ideas. It gives you the top results uh, from search engines. And so this is helpful for kind of looking at what types of API are other people mentioning. So I'll kind of look at those articles real quick. This one is the top result. Um, they have a video, so that's probably helping their search engine ranks. They have some types of APIs. They, it's a lot of lists and links. It's not a really deep article, uh, but it links to a lot of things. So it maybe it's like uh, being linked back to its kind of link hub or something. The other one here, uh, the second one is types of API and popular REST API protocol. Um, so this goes into a bunch of different API types. I think it uses some of the same types. Not a super long article either. Um, so, you know, maybe we don't have to, to write something super detailed or long to do this. I think as I look at this, what I might want to do if I were really trying to rank uh, in the top tier for something like this is I would have, I would start off with like, listing the types of API and for each one I would include maybe some examples of you know these kinds of APIs and like how developers might use them or um, access them and uh, things like that but uh, I don't know whatever it this is just a demo anyway so let's start off with a tool called shortly which is built on GTP3 and with shortly it's like made for writing stories but it works actually pretty well for blog posts I think GTP3 is a general purpose enough tool. So what you can do is give it a story background. So I, I wrote in a little explanation of what an API is and what I want to tell. This is basically a brief like I would write give to a writer. So an API is a tool used in programming that allows two computers or programming languages to communicate. Um, in this article, we'll tell readers about the different types of API and how they might use each of them. Uh, maybe I'll add something like wheel include examples of each type of API covered. Okay, so to start off, like GTP3 gets uh, better the more content you give it. And so uh, this is pretty sparse. I'm giving it this background, I'm giving it the title called the types of API and application programming interfaces are, and then it's I'm gonna let it start. So let's see what it comes up with for a definition of application programming interfaces. Now, keep in mind, I kind of gave it one over here, but it's not gonna reuse that. Um, so it actually is gonna come up with its own unique definition based on reading content on the internet. So application programming interfaces, short API, are one of the most important features of any programming language. They allow programmers to connect to external sources easily in order to handle things like creating graphics, manipulating the web browser, and manipulating hardware like the file system. There are six main types of API that are usually covered by computer science programs. Wow, so it <laughs> up front has decided there are six types of API. I don't know what those are, we'll see as we go. Uh, any programmer should be familiar with these types of APIs. Without them, programming might be very difficult. Okay, so I mean, this is not exactly like, you know, the, the world's best writing in, ever, but um, let's kind of see what it comes up with. So the first type of API is, you don't have to give it uh, sort of pushes like that, although I feel like it makes um, makes GTP3 come up with better content if you give it a, a good sort of direction that you want it to head in. 
so the first type of API is called a serial port API. This type of API allows programmers to easily manipulate serial ports, which are serial based hardware that transfer data between two devices. These can include devices like mice or keyboard. The serial port API is usually chosen by programmers who are working on a device like a laptop that has several users who might be using it at the same time. So this is interesting. It had come, it's come up with serial port APIs as its first type. So it's, it's pretty far off from what the top SERP results uh, have decided are the types of API. So this one covers open API, partner API, internal and composite. This one also, I think it covers those same types. So web APIs, open API, internal API, partner API, composite. Uh, so, and then the, the different um, methods of APIs, I think this one is very similar. So honestly, like if you're from a search engine perspective, you almost, if you're doing SEO work, you almost always want to look at what the top results are doing and sort of expand on them or do what they're doing. So you don't want to go off in a completely different direction like GTP3 has done here, but they didn't know, it didn't know that. So one way to correct it is to start by giving it something uh, to go on. So the first type of API is an open API. Open APIs, and then we'll let GTP3 do its thing and see what it comes up with here. Are designed to help programmers make it easier for other developers to use their code. Open APIs allow for developers to create APIs that are compatible with commonly used programming languages. This means that programmers can build an application using these APIs in less time. This type of API is used in places where there's a large following of programmers like Linux, Android, and Windows. Okay, that makes sense. So now we've got our, um, uh, we're gonna just put in some headers here just for future use. So open API, and then like, uh, several, so examples of an open API include, and then we'll see what it comes up with. The OpenGL, which helps programmers build games, and the jQuery library. These are both libraries that focus on certain types of programming. Commercial API. So it's already moved on to the next type of API, and it kind of picked up that I'm writing in Markdown, which is pretty amazing, to be honest. I mean, I am, uh, like, I, I didn't tell it, you know, this is not a Markdown-based editor. It just picked that up, and uh, it, it sort of has moved on to that. So these are more common commercial, and so it picked up a next kind of API, which is commercial, <clears throat> which is basically what a partner API is, so not that much different from here. Um, and then let's kind of say like uh, an example of a company with a commercial API is, and see what GTP3 comes up with here. Microsoft. Microsoft has an API called the Mappy Mail API that allows users and developers to interact with Microsoft Mail. This API has partnerships <clears throat> with software companies like Mozilla that help them use this API in their own programs. So this is pretty amazing. It's just come up with an example. I have no idea if this is true. I think I would fact check uh, GTP3 before I publish this on the internet, but you know, that, that's fair. So then it gave us closed API. So it's already moving on to the next example again. Um, are controlled by the company that made them. Closed APIs are allowed. Commercial quality APIs, they're not free for consumers. Um, a common example of a closed API is the Google Maps API. Microsoft is often forced to use it instead of their own because it has better mapping features and is used by a lot of online websites and apps like Google Maps. No one outside of Google is allowed to use these APIs without the permission of Google. Um, I don't know how that's different from a commercial API, but you know, we'll let GTP3 live its life. Embed APIs are used in physical devices. Let's see what, if we don't give it anything else and just see what it keeps uh, coming up with here. And so it already knows that we, the second thing we want in each of these sections is an example. So this is pretty amazing too, because uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm writing outlines for, for writers, uh, I find that I, I give them basically, okay, for each <clears throat> type of API you're gonna feature, you're gonna include what it is, an example, and maybe, uh, you know, an image or something like that. GTP3 has picked that up on my pattern there and is already including that. So 
But what are we up to? One, two, three, four types of API. Let's just keep let it keep rolling. See if it comes up with uh, with more good stuff here. Applied APIs. Um, <laughs> this is interesting. I don't. Yeah, this is stuff I, I, I don't even know. I, I'm not sure. I've never heard that term applied APIs. <clears throat> Capabilities of APIs. So now it's kind of moved on, I think, from our, uh, our first section here. One, two, three, four, five. And now it's into a whole new area of capabilities of APIs. So um, it, it's really, uh, it's not like, you know, it's obviously not thinking for itself, but it gives you this feeling that like it's kind of coming up with stuff. Um, so let's give it, let's kind of keep giving this thing some more structure because the more structure we give it and the more, um, uh, let's call this five types of uh, developer API. And up here it, it sort of gave us six before. We're, we're just gonna go with these five just for the sake of brevity. Um, and then I'm going to kind of like, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have it do a very short paragraph right here about the five types of developer API before we list them off, see if it comes up with something good. Uh oh, now it thinks it's, uh, no, maybe not. So, okay. Um, let's just keep going then. So the next thing it's, it's talking about is, is capabilities of APIs. Uh, so that's interesting. That's a, let's see what it does with that topic. Okay, so it's telling us about the capabilities of APIs. Um, what else might we include about APIs, like uh, cost of <clears throat> APIs? Let's see if it comes up with anything here. <laughs> uh, you know, this doesn't really make much sense. The cost of an API is not very costly as APIs are made for a good cause. APIs are only expensive when they're unnecessary. They're usually inexpensive because they're often useful to programmers. Um, yeah, so I don't know that this would do us much good. Um, let's cut that. Uh, let's see what happens when we do in conclusion and let GTP3 finish out the article. Okay, so it gave us a little conclusion of this article. So um, this is, you know, we've gotten up 665 words, which might be the bare minimum for something that is like decent for search engines. Uh, in real life, I would probably, you know, go through this and do quite a bit of heavy editing. I mean, this is uh, a pretty rudimentary uh, article, to be honest, but it's really interesting to see it uh, pick up on things and figure out patterns from, from things that it's written. And uh, it's kind of cool. I mean, I, <laughs> hey Jeff, I, I could definitely see using this to help uh, get maybe like a, a new article started or get a new section to an article started, kind of get me unblocked maybe, or as a way to just, uh, I could maybe see it as a starting point and then you could sort of take this and build off of it. I could see it also maybe for some less technical <clears throat> articles. Um, you know, maybe I'll try like, publishing some GTP3 articles on my personal site just to see after I clean them up and see if I can get them to, to rank or if they actually are any good and people can tell the difference. Um, I have a feeling that people will be able to tell the difference, especially if they're this short and sort of like, uh, I don't know, um, light on content, but uh, it would be kind of fun.